Listener discretion advised. Now, here's Loveline with Dr. Drew and Adam Carolla. Hey, yes, indeed. <laughs> hey, Drew. Hey, Adam. Hey, what's the phone number? Uh, 1-800-LOV-191, L-O-V-E-191, or 1-800-568-3191. Ah, and the fax number? Uh, <laughs> 310, uh, Mike, help me, 8, 854-4455. <laughs> All right, we're off to run and start. One little thing I forgot. Uh, first, before we get started, let me just say that Fred Schneider, you know him from the B-52s, is in studio with us. Now, I shouldn't say us, I should say with me, because Drew's back on the West Coast, and I'm out on the East Coast. I'm at the uh, Westwood One in Arlington, Virginia. Still, well, not in Washington, D.C. right now, but just across the river. We were at the, uh, Ann and I were at the HFS Festival yesterday at RFK. About fifty or 60,000 screaming, intoxicated, pierced, shirtless kids there. And a good time was had by uh, one and all. And we got to hook up with some of the bands that uh, we've had on the show, like uh, Cracker and Goldfinger and Gravity Kills and Lush. And uh, I got to bring the uh, presidents of the United States of America out. Oh, no kidding. Which is exciting. And I got up there and I said a little, uh, I gave you your kudos, Drew. Yeah, what'd you say? I said that you're back in the uh, hotel with 15 Filipino hookers and you couldn't make the stage. I was also hit with a roll of Mentos, which is, uh, I'm looking as a step up from the uh, Birkenstock I was hit with last weekend at the Edge Fest in Minnesota. So, uh... I'm working my way down the candy line, and hopefully I'll just get hit with some, like, Tic Tacs or something the next time around. But not actually a single Mentos. I got hit with a jumbo refillable Mentos roll. So. You, you didn't really say what you, you just said, did you? Oh, absolutely. Come on, Drew. The kids love you. The crowd went nuts. There was like 50,000 people there. It was amazing. Oh, I feel much better now. <laughs> I feel much better now. All Adam, right. you are really the ambassador of goodwill, aren't you? You really somebody I want to send out there and represent me. Drew, believe me, the show is huge here in Washington. How was, we, hey, look at that. How was the White House? I can't believe that you've set foot in that place, first of all. Uh, forget about, uh, yeah, in, you know, let me tell you, the cavity search was no picnic, Drew. <laughs> Be glad you weren't there. Uh, let me just say one thing. Washington knows this show. We were we were out in a cab, Ann and I, uh, Friday night, and we had this uh, Indian guy was driving the cab. He, like, recognized my voice. Oh, how interesting. And he uh, was like, oh, it is the Adam. Did he kick you out? <laughs> no, he listens and he loves the show. The, that's the capital of our country. They, everybody there has bad judgment. Yes, it is the Adam. And that smelly Drew. <laughs> and uh, and uh, Drew, brace yeah. yourself. For what? One of the guys, one of the uh, Secret Service agents manning the gate at the White House. Yeah. Big Loveline fan. Really? Yeah. He will uh, and be... he let you in, too. Absolutely. Wow. And we, uh, Anne and uh, her lovely husband and myself and the guys from the Afghan Whigs toured the White House today. So uh, no, uh, very eclectic group, actually. So uh, anyway. You cool, Drew? I just got that out of the way. I hit the mic for you. So. All right. Don't, good. Get it over with. All right. Don't go to the phones yet. Let's let's welcome our guest, Fred Schneider. Hi, Fred. Hey. Thanks for sitting there through all that uh, chatter. Yeah, that was fascinating. <laughs> now, Fred, you were, did you go to the festival? I performed at the festival. You did? Well, I was on second stage. Oh, oh I'm we sorry. We had 175,000 people there. It, it was bedlam, Drew. I wow. got to tell you. Yeah, they had they had two stages. One was in the actual uh, stadium where the Redskins play, and the other one was out next to the stadium, I guess, in the parking lot? Uh, well, next to it. And a few, uh, few bands that we've had played there. I think uh, Gravity Kills played there and uh, Boys Against Girls. Wow. Or yes. Girls Against Boys. <laughs> someone Against Everyone Someone against played everybody. there. Everyone Against Everybody. Yeah. All right, I'm sorry, Fred. I didn't and, get out and uh, see that. Guided by voices, and so that was a pretty. I mean, that was a main stage anywhere else in the country, except for there's just that was a huge Who's... damn thing. Yeah. So how did how did it go? Went really good. Kids love you. Oh boy, I got an encore. So. Oh really? Yeah, they don't usually give you encores now, on the second stage. What, so. You're not playing with the B52s right now. Not this. This is a solo project. Right. And who who do you have for a band? I have uh, two of the guys that played on the album, uh, Rick Sims from The Digits and Tom Zalewski from Tar and uh, Chris Fuller and Todd Cole. And they're, they're all from uh, bands in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And and this is uh, you're out supporting the uh, Just Fred, the Just Fred, which I have, record. which you guys, it's it's in all the record stores, and you may have passed by and seen it. It's a, how old were you in that picture, Fred? Eleven. 
11. That was a good guess. I told Ann 10, and then I switched it to 11. Well, I turned 11 <clears throat> that year. Still had the cowlick. It's, yeah, I guess I do. Didn't have the goatee, but uh, no. that probably came Didn't in. Didn't have any hair back then. A couple it years on my later. Head. All right, and uh, you're out. You're touring now and yes. supporting this? I'm uh, actually finishing up the East Coast, and uh, probably next month I'll go to the West Coast. I'm going to Europe, too. Any uh, plans of uh, doing uh, B-52 stuff in the future? I'm riding with the B-52s, and we'll have a record out next year. And you guys will go out and uh, support that, I guess? Most likely, yes. All right, because uh, I know people are into the B-52s. And uh, Dr. Drew? I'm ready. You ready to man the phones? Let's get to the Fred, calls. you ready to help the uh, ailing youth of America? Uh, you bet. This is Starla. She is 16. Starla. Hello? Hi there. You're Hi. on the air. Starla. Starla. Everyone uses fake names, Fred. Oh, I see. No, that's my real name, my given name. All right, Starla, what's the problem? Um, well, I'm 16, and me and my boyfriend have a kid together, and I've been going out with him for like four years. And about, when was it, four months ago, he started talking about having threesomes with his best friend. How old is he? Me and him and his best friend. How, how old is your boyfriend? He's um, 16, too. He's huh. about nine months younger than me. Huh. All right, so you guys met when you were 12. Yeah. Fred's already got a puss on. He can't believe it. <laughs> this is average call. Well, I'm Fred. thinking. I'm I'm thinking for what, you know what the correct answer. You will met be at this. age twelve. Oh, there is no correct answer here on love. Well, Line, not correct Fred. answer, Just but helpful answer. Blurt out anything that comes to your mind. If you feel like yelling, Keish Lorraine, <laughs> scream away. All right. You met when you were twelve. Yeah, and we've been going out for four years, and we had a kid um, six months ago, seven months ago. We had so you're kid. you're like fifteen and a half. Yeah, when I got pregnant. Wow. And about um, four months ago, he um, started talking about having threesomes with his best friend, who he just met and became his best friend. Oh, my. And I you thought didn't, he was you, just... You didn't do it, did you? Well, I thought he was just joking around. And for like a month, he talked about it. You know, he didn't really, you know, he was like insinuating. Mm -hmm. uh, let me explain something, Starla. When, uh -huh. when guys bring up a any deviant sexual stuff, the first time they bring it up, they do it in the form of a joke. You know, they go, hey, wouldn't it be funny? Oh, boy, I bet you'd love it if my buddy, you know, so-and-so came along and did this and did that. But believe me, if they bring it up, I don't care how hard they're laughing, eventually they're going to beg for it in a very serious... That's what happened, too. Right, okay. And, and then for about a week, he was, you know, come on, please, come on, it'd be cool, you know. And I was thinking, you know, no, you're going to get mad at me after this happens, you know, and you're going to hate me because he, he's... Got a very short temper. He gets mad all the time. Good and, instincts, Darla. Did you did you go through with it? Yes, I did. Uh, and the relationship? He, well, he said he said you know no. I just you know he's all you know everybody does it. You know lots of people do it. It's not going to be different for us. And it's just a one time thing, just to see what's like. And if we like it, you know we keep doing it. And no. I'm all, no. I'm like no. And I mean one night in particular, which was the night he just begged and begged. And all right, what happened? What happened though? And so I did it. And what happened? And he got really mad. Just and he as you, left. As you and predicted, huh? Yeah. I mean, that, that, that is such an unstable situation for people to do that. I mean, if somebody, if a couple are engaging in that kind of thing, that relationship is really destined to failure. The kinds of feelings that come out of that kind of interaction with a third person involved, you can't predict. And it just destabilizes the relationship. And it, there's already probably a problem in any relationship where that kind of thing is being contemplated. Sure, anyway. the problem isn't the third person. It's a second penis. All right, whatever. All right. Well, what, uh, if, what if no? If it had been a, a woman, if the third person had been a woman, it would have done this. It, it would not have been him reacting necessarily, or it might have been, uh, but somebody would have reacted in an honest, unexpected way. He, he would have got over that in a heartbeat. Starla, mm -hmm. did you spend a little too much time with his friend? No. <laughs> you you kept the attention on him. Yeah. Funny that he'd want to bring a guy in for his first uh, threesome. Most guys are begging for for the females. Yeah. That's the point. That's what I thought, but I said no way. And yeah. uh, anyway, he got mad. He left, and I mean, he came back the same night that he left, and he's telling me, you know, he can't believe I did this. You know, I totally screwed everything up, and you know, I felt the same way because you know I should have just kept saying no. And then he's like, okay, well, I forgive you. You know, I didn't say I was sorry, but uh, he said he why forgave. should he forgive you? I mean, it was his idea. Yeah, it was his idea. I know. That's what I. He's told trying him. to make you feel guilty for something. Yeah, that's right. what I thought. And Starla. Then, Starla, listen, the guy's got problems. The guy's 16 years old. He doesn't even have his head screwed on straight yet. Uh -huh. He's trying to, uh, you know, have a relationship and raise a family, and, you know, he's still in the sort of uh, Pac-Man mindset. Uh -huh. I mean, he's 16. Yeah. Is he devoted to the child and you? Um, well, yeah. Well, but the time that all this happened, he was into... 
drugs really, really bad. Oh, and I didn't know about it. And I, I think maybe that's why. And ever since then, he's, I mean, he's like, you know, he's like he used to be totally sweet, you know. But then sometimes he'll just like get, just like go off for no All right. reason. All right. If he's an addict, he's an addict unless he's in recovery. And if he's not in recovery, you have to insist that he get himself involved in some kind of a recovery program. You guys have a child. That is your priority right now. You've got a very chaotic, unstable, unhealthy relationship that I hope, I hope you and everybody like you, on behalf of your children, that invariably everybody has before marriage, which is something i got to get in my head, that people have kids before marriage, but that you focus on creating a stable environment for that child and you let that be your priority. And part of that has got to be your insistence that he maintain himself in sobriety. Okay. Well, look, this guy's uh, an idiot. It's never going to work. That's that, that's <laughs> it ain't going to work. this is Trevor, also 16. Uh. Trevor, Hello. yeah, you're on Loveline. Um, yeah, me and my girlfriend, we just started um having sex like a week ago, you know, and we've been going out for about five months. And she said that it doesn't, she doesn't really like it. I mean, it hurt her at first, and then you know, then she just doesn't really enjoy it. How old is she? She's sixteen too. All right, Trevor. Women women don't really dig sex until they get a little bit older. Uh-huh. The uh, nice ones act like they dig sex <laughs> yeah. so that you can have a good time so that wh- they while can, your so, hormones are swimming around. So that they can do what? What are the, what are the women interested in? Oh, Adam? Drew, don't turn this into a big 20 no, questions no, no. thing. Well, you you got a statement you know. say it. You know. Why, but what are women, women interested in? They're interested in certain. Look, the man is. I want to hear you say it. All right, he's like a marlin, and they're uh, they're out off the coast of Baja, and they're trying to land the guy. They got to get the gaff under the gill to get him up on board, and that what? gaff comes in the form of sex. You the bait the, comes in the form of sex. There's a bunch of pussies staring at me in the other room here after you said that one. I'm, I'm not so sure that it's that sort of bleak. It's that that women's priority is about the emotional content of the relationship and how the physical contact may build on that. That men strictly can have a physical thing, and that's it. Fred, where are you? Where do you stand on this? Well, she probably feels like if she wants to keep dating right. you, that she has to put out or you know have sex, whatever. And she's not ready. And she's not ready, yeah. and it hurts because when you're a virgin, you know, and it hurts. <laughs> Tell me about it, baby. And let me and let me say this. Here's the irony of life. The cruel irony is when she's uh, forty. And 40 pounds overweight with a big goiter on her neck. She's going to be hot every second of the day. And this guy, Trevor, is going to have a prostate the size of uh, Nevada. And he's going to be an alcoholic. And he's going to want to do nothing but drink beer and watch TV and not put out sexually. So it's kind of a cruel, ironic joke. <laughs> what on earth are you talking Yeah, well, where did he go about? with that? This is Jennifer well, 17. He, t- he took the ball and ran into yeah. a You know what, Adam? I'm kinda, I'm kinda, about a mile. I kind of like this controlling the call thing. I'm going to sit in this seat from now on, okay? This is the risk yeah. you took going out there by yourself. Just don't break any wind in that seat, Drew. That's mine. You, you got another call? Yeah, Jennifer. Oh, oh 17. Jennifer. Hello? Hey, Jennifer. You're on Love Line with <laughs> Fred Schneider. I have a big problem. We're ready. Yeah. All right. All right. Okay. Well, I'm in school, and I just moved to a new school, <clears throat> and I started hanging out with these two girls who I thought were very nice at first, and um, we all like music a lot, and so we started hanging out together and like playing music and things, and they said, oh, we kind of have a secret club. Do you want to be part of it? And I'm all sure, and they're all, it's called Roxy Locks. Oh, Mama. Okay. And it sounded like kind of like they were hardcore about it. I'm all whatever, and everything was fine for about a month. And then, um, I don't know, the one girl, she started getting really possessive of me, and particularly, and I didn't know why. And um, Was there some initiation into the Roxy Locks? Well, I didn't think so at first, but then later on they, like, showed me. They have, like, these little little tiny tattoos. Yeah. And, um, well, they like, got me to drink one night, and she got she has her own tattoo gun, and I guess some, said some gangster guy made it for her or something. And, Very um, I nice. Got one. Very and, nice. Huh? Clean needles, of course. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah I got my own. Uh, and um, <clears throat> but that, that they gave you. My you mom know? was gonna see the tattoo, and I don't know. I just keep finding out more and more about them. Like they're really into stuff I don't want to be part of. You got to get out before it's too late. Well, it's like now. It's like they've already like. Sworn you to have stuff. got to get out. Tell your parents. Tell somebody. Tell my parents. Tell somebody. Tell somebody at school. Tell somebody. Because you're you're in you, you sound like the kind of person that really does a lot of people pleasing. You're pretty dependent on other people. 
And these people saw that and took advantage of it, and now they've got you sucked into something where you don't want to be involved. But I just want to be a strong person. I well, don't... Okay, then then you stand up by yourself and get out of this. Yeah. Is that realistic? Yeah, it is, but I don't know. They're going to like pick on me for the rest of the school or See, something. I, don't th- I think you need to gather some support together first before you do that. But if you're, if you're new in the school... Uh-huh. Do you have other friends that you can uh, rely on to back you up and right. things like that? Exactly. Mm, no. You don't have. You don't really have any friends there. No. All right, but it's be- it's better to be on your own than be hooked up with a bunch of juvenile delinquents. Yeah. I so mean, better. Sh- to- yeah. Go ahead, friend. You should go to your parents then, because if you don't have friends who can back you up, you should go to your parents. You really or- should. Yeah. Or somebody, you, an adult, you right. can really talk to right. and trust. Right. Somebody yeah. who can support you through this because you need somebody there with you or it's going to be very difficult when they start putting pressure on you to withstand it. Uh, Drew? Yes? I'm starting my own uh, social club, and uh, when I get back in L.A., I'm going to call it the Napster Baiters. Ugh. Fred doesn't know that uh, napping and masturbation are my two uh, biggest biggest hobbies. But At Fred, the same you're, time, you're welcome to join. Uh, well, I'll wait. I got a silk jacket back in the hotel room. We'll put uh, your initials right on the collar, please. <laughs> this is Josh, thirteen. Uh, yeah. Hey, Josh. What? Go ahead. What's up? Okay. Um, I have like a bump in my left nipple. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I think it like might be a cyst or something. Uh, underneath the, le- the left nipple? Yeah. Is it tender? Yeah, kind of. Is there any fluid come out of the nipple at all? No. Well, as you pass through puberty, like around the age you are, 13 or so, it's real common for men, young men, to get breast enlargement. It's a result of estrogen being produced by your adrenal glands. And that can be enhanced. That will get worse, if you, interestingly, if you smoke a lot of pot. And that can even persist or, or come later. In fact, adults will get that too sometimes if they smoke pot. But in, in, if it's just something that's happening naturally, it tends to go away by itself. Okay. Okay? Yeah. All right. Thanks. You don't suggest uh, he heat up something sharp and try to drain it? Oh, yeah, nice. Well, I'm not a doctor, Drew. Ben, 23. Ben? Hello, yeah. Adam, Dr. Drew, love you. I love your show. Love you, Ben. <laughs> Here's my situation. I was dating a girl, let's call her Lori, from September to this, you know, past February. And everything was okay. You know, the relationship was, you know, healthy physically and mentally and all that. But I still, for some reason, in the back of my mind, it didn't feel right. So I broke up with her in February. Well, back in January, another girl at work, we'll call her Stacy, she, uh, you know, was sort of like sending, sending sort of like signals towards me that she was interested, but she didn't know at the time that I was dating Lori, who she also works with. Uh, some of the signals were, you know, um, she, a friend of hers was telling me that she was interested in someone at work, and I'm like trying to pry, seeing who it was, just to see, you know, I didn't really care at the time, but she wouldn't tell me. And uh, also her, Stacy and her friend were also like, for some reason, they were... Uh, asking me if I was interested in anyone at work. Well, at the time, I, didn't, I said no, because, I mean, I was dating someone, but they didn't know it, and I didn't say it. Well, when we broke up on February, uh, that's one of the signals. Also, we went out to, uh, to the bar one night after work, and uh, a friend, uh, another co-worker was asking me about my girlfriend, uh, Lori. Hey, uh, Ben? Stacey. Ben? Yeah. Pardon me for just a second. I got to catch a flight at 10 a.m. tomorrow morning, and basically, I still have to pack and brush my teeth. So, okay. do you want to, you want to get to the freaking point? Okay. Basically, uh, I when I broke up with Lori, I asked Stacy out months, a couple months after, and she said no. Apparently, because they, they were friends, and also she, she didn't believe that I, that she sent signals towards me, and I think she did. And my, I'm think, I'm ask, I'm, my question is that I, was I totally way off on some of the signals that she threw at me, or is it because she's a good friend of? Uh, my ex-girlfriend that she doesn't want to, you know. Fred, do you have any idea I what's going on? I think you hit on? the nail on the head. She probably was sending you signals, but because she's friends with your ex-girlfriend, she decided not to follow through with, uh, you know, pursuing you. Even though she denied she denied you ever sending them, she was probably just lying just to save her. I wouldn't worry about it. I would find someone else. I would just... Oh, that's uh, true. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, don't, I wouldn't let it bug you or worry you. You are probably... you. sounds like, you. you know, you were right. But Fred, you're much too nice to the callers. Come on, give him, give, give him a little shot of, give him a little shot of truth in the ass. Uh, abuse him a little bit. Nah, not just yet. You're, you're gonna wait. I'll wait. wait about forty five minutes. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, did you get rid of him? Uh, no, he's Drew? there. He's there. All right. Well, get rid of him. Bye, Ben. He's gone. All right. I had no idea what he was asking. Did you, Drew? Yep. Oh, don't give me that. 
Well, some people. Uh, you want me to answer? No, no. Forget about you. We got to talk about uh, Fred <laughs> Schneider. <laughs> now, Fred has a CD out called Just Fred, and we're going to play a little song called The uh, Bulldozer off of that uh, after the commercial. Uh, anything behind that song, Fred? Anything you want to say about it? Well, there's a uh, video out with it uh, shot in a trailer park in Chicago, which sort of puts the whole thing in perspective. It's about real life in America today. All right, so we'll to make a long story short. And is that video is that uh, going to hit the uh, MTV it's out ways? Now. It's on MTV and it's on all the good uh, local video shows. Too. All right, so look for the video and you can hear the song after this. Hi, this is Heidi Fleiss, and you're listening to Love Line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Two names that wish they could be found in the little black book. Oh, and she is a free woman now, or at least awaiting a second trial, but probably going free. And I can't help but wonder if we didn't have something to do with that. Me and my my tirade against the uh, LAPD vice squad. I, I got to believe in some small way we did put a little, we, we did contribute to her uh, legal fund in our own little way. Fred? Takes two to tango. Why should the women go to jail? Absolutely. What about all those uh, Japanese businessmen who shelled out thousands of dollars? All those guys. I mean, you know, are they innocent? Absolutely. Well, but what do they do that's, you know? No, they're innocent, and so is she, yeah, so and so is she, are the girls. You know, it's consenting, so who cares? Everybody is innocent, except for people that go out and hurt people without their permission. That's true. Yeah, but people that, that organize rings like this suck people into it who get hurt as a result. Oh, yes. Drew. All right. Let me. Yes. How about, how about remember those? Uh, those ba, 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 remember those two girls we had here had written a book about being prostitutes in Hollywood, and she got sucked into it and got destroyed because of it. All right. But what about the poor kid who gets sucked into working at Del Taco or Der Wiener Schnitzel for five years, making three fifty an hour, living in some crappy uh, rat infested apartment, and doing that? I mean, at least they made their money and got out. No. 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 No, psychologically, believe me, that 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 you, Adam, you're saying something very disappointing. And the fact is, that's why people raise their kids to be able to accept something like that, as opposed to going the easy way, which could be so devastating. Drew, do you realize how many teenagers are maimed each year by those fry machines? <laughs> You've been there. I've been there, baby. That's what I figured. <laughs> I worked at McDonald's. I worked at a quick chicken place, and I could have had a handful of burning grease at any minute. Really? How old were you, Fred? Uh, just out of high school. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, all right. We, we got a million and one things to get to with uh, Fred, but one of the million one and one things we got to get to is a song called Bulldozer. Bulldozer. Bulldozer from Fred Schneider off of the CD, Just Fred. It's easy to find. It's a picture of Fred at about age 11. Uh, it's got a lovely sweater on and a, what looks to be a clip-on tie. It was a clip-on because I never learned to tie one till about 10 years ago. And Fred, was this a school portrait or something? Yes, and it was much cheaper than hiring an art department to have it all designed for me. Well, it's kind of nice. You look good. Uh, everything's in place. I look the same. Young boy with his whole life ahead of him. Did did he ever dream that he would go on to uh, be in a group called the B-52s and uh, just make some of the most bizarre music ever? Thank you. <laughs> no, it's a compliment. Oh, I agree. And, and now, when did you guys form? Uh, 76. So, 70, yeah, late 76, actually. And the October whole... October 76. Was the whole Rock Lobster thing, like, late in 78? We wrote Rock Lobster in 76. 76, 77. That's one of our first songs. But was We it... never recorded it till later, but we were playing in Athens, Georgia at parties before we uh, ever made our own single. And people, like, I remember when that song came out, I think I was in, like, the 10th grade, maybe the 9th or 10th grade, and people were listening to, you know, REO Speedwagon <laughs> and Journey. Oh, yeah. And all of a sudden, here come this guy singing about a, there goes a Norwal. And everyone's like, what the hell is this guy? It, All right. But it caught on, and well, it kept going. We, we listened to the whole punk and new wave thing. We were part of that. We weren't paying attention to the uh, commercial radio pap that was out there that time. But you guys kind of formed your own type of music. Yeah, we wanted to do our own thing. Uh, we had no money, so all the instruments, instruments we used were uh, old. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like we were trying to be the 60s. It's just that the stuff we had was cheap old equipment, and we wrote all our own songs. And, uh, like, who wrote most of the lyrics to most of those songs? Well, Kate, Cindy, and I wrote the lyrics, and Keith and Ricky did the music. 
I and, came up with like Rock Lobster and a, a few of the songs, but mostly it's a, it was a collaborative thing. Now, it still is. How do you come up with a with Rock Lobster? I know it's a stupid question. It's hard to answer. But what I mean is, is you know, well, Keisha I was Lorraine I was at the 2001 disco in Atlanta, and they were showing pictures. It was empty too. This was during the disco days, and they were showing pictures of puppies and happy children and barbecues with these horrible lobsters on a grill. And I thought, Rock Lobster, that's a good title for a song. <laughs> so if, if that makes sense. And that's where the poodles came in, too. Uh, well, they weren't on the grill, but... Drew. Yeah. You uh, Now, we had to straighten Drew out a little bit during the commercial. We had to tell him to relax with the uh, heavy morose calls. It was a Sunday night. Fred and I were about ready to commit uh, double All right. suicide All right, let's here. go. Let's go. Here's Sarah, 25. All right. Sarah. Sarah. Yeah, I'm here. Hey, you're on Loveline. I am. Hey. Hi. Loving you guys. Loving you, babe. Anyway. Okay, here's the deal. I um, started going out with this guy. We'll call him uh, Todd. And I dated him for about three and a half years. This was four years ago. In that time, I became pretty good friends with his brother. We'll call him Eric. All right, let's not do the will call yeah. him. Do not yeah. preface everything. I think that we just, should do the no, will. You, well, you decide what you're going to call him, and you call him that. That's yeah, all. Sarah, relax. And I want to put a quick message out to all the Moronic Love Line oh. listeners. Do not do that will call him. Oh, just give okay. the goddamn name. That's any fine. name. I've any name is fine. It, it helps suspend so, our, our uh, illusion of, okay. of reality. Well, it's all a fantasy anyway. So. Well, what happens? So, okay. so his brother, Eric. Yeah, Bruce so getting out of control over there. Started... Uh, <laughs> started uh, seeing him as friends, and then eventually, of course, sexually. Well, I was still going out with this other guy. Wait, 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 guys, wait, 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 wait. She kind of glossed over that. Yeah, you of start, course. You started seeing his brother? Well, he, he kind of, yeah. Sarah? Yes, I did. All right. At the same time as you were involved in a three-and-a-half-year relationship. Well, yeah, which was which is not a very good relationship. Don't get me wrong. I, I understand that, and obviously not. But still, it's kind of uh, flirting with real heavy feelings to to deal with two brothers in that manner. I know. It is pretty heavy, huh? Yeah. So, which brings me to the point. Okay, now we've been broken up for like a year and a half. You Todd and Todd? Yeah. Yeah. He has a new girlfriend on and off, but when we see each other, it's still pretty passionate. You and Todd? Yeah, and... Where's Eric? <laughs> just went over to... Yeah, I saw him a couple weekends ago, and he talked about how it'd be so wonderful if we were together and everything, and but I started thinking, yeah, it would. All right, but Sarah. But now he won't do anything because All right, Sarah, his brother. Sarah. What? Sarah, you know what you sound like? You sound like when they uh, interview those serial killers <laughs> and they talk real matter-of-factly about, yeah, then I, you know, the little nursing student was there and I, I killed the first bitch with a pillow and <laughs> then I went out and I got myself a Pepsi and then I came back and killed the rest of them. Very matter-of-fact about... That's right. Yeah, but let me tell you something. First off, these two, one of them, Eric or Todd, <laughs> It's not funny. Sir, could have gotten one... loaded and killed the other one over you, which would have been a huge mistake because you don't sound like that much. I don't. Th oh, but I am, though. I'm a wonderful person. You're just playing with fire. You think I am? Yeah, you're, it's, and nothing's going to happen with this. You're just, uh, you can't break two brothers apart like that. Well, I don't want to break him apart. But you will but why because should that other you're... one even care? Why well, should that other one it's, even it's care? He's male gone, jealousy, it's over. But it's jealousy, Bye -bye. and um, he Again. won't want to see his brother if he's with you, and the brother won't want to be with you because he knows he can't see his brother. So you're sort of like going in, you're going to reach a dead end. Well, we're, we're missing the real point here, which is uh, somebody did Sarah wrong at some right. point. Right. Because she, she's right. whacked. She can't, she can't, she's like what you call crazy relationship. She can't see the appropriate I boundaries know, that other people see. I like see. both of them, and I've been through so many men, and it's just like, no, no, you're not him. So. All right, Drew, go do and your Drew stuff. Sarah, <laughs> and these Sarah, two ones, I think that I, are. I'm not going to go too far with it, but just to say that you have problems with your relationships, and Adam is suggesting that it's because of somebody having done something to you when you were perhaps even younger, or some craziness in your family systems that no, that, pretty, that, pretty good family. that that keeps you from perceiving normal propriety and normal boundaries, mm -hmm. and 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 seeking out and pursuing crazy relationships, which is what this is. <laughs> Sarah, I can hear it in your voice. What? I can hear the insanity in your voice. <laughs> Believe me, Fred's over here uh -huh. nodding away. Uh -huh. Do you hear it, Fred? Uh -huh. Oh, uh, be I mean think, for a second. I think so. 
Okay. Don't worry, you'll still find sell someone records. else. Go find ahead. find, leave a, them find both. a new crowd. Right, leave them both before you destroy either one or both of them. And yourself. And now, yeah. now, are we out of time for this segment again? Uh, or should ooh, I go to the call? Holy mackerel. No, we are out of time. Thank you for that, Drew. You're very, you're very keen tonight. You're getting a little too big for your britches. I'm going to have to come over there and straighten you out. I, I'm not moving from the seat tomorrow night. Oh, there goes Drew's high horse. <laughs> Got out of the barn early tonight. <laughs> we will be back with more Fred Schneider after this. In it. That would uh, be off your uh, solo album from 91? Uh, from 84. All right. I'm going to punch producer. Or 83. Uh, it, can, it was reissued, just to put it back in print. Okay, because uh, engineer Mike just whispered in my ear, oh, we're playing something off of Fred's solo, solo album from 1991 called Monster. Well, it's reissued in 91. All right. But it, it's actually from 84. All right. So for that, he just gets a, he gets a knee in the groin. He does not get it a It says 91 the on the new All groin. Right. So. Anyone could have made that mistake, especially Engineer Mike. That is the voice Ooh. of Fred Schneider. Ooh. He has a CD out called Just Fred. It's uh, all over the place. They're uh, playing his video on MTV. Yep. And uh, what about the rest of the band? Are they doing solo things, too? Well, no. We're writing, so we'll have a band album out uh, next year. Uh huh. And is there uh, anyone pissed off that you're doing your own thing? No, no. We all take breaks, and we wanted to take some time off. And while we took time off, I did a solo thing. Right. And uh, throughout, I mean, how long have you guys been together now? Twenty years? Yeah, it'll be twenty years. And people have always in the band have gone off and done their own uh, little yeah, projects. Yeah, Kate sang with REM, and uh, Cindy took some time off, and Keith writes uh, instrumental music, and so everybody does different things. Now, and you got to do that. You know, it keeps everything fresh. Right, and then you guys all... Then we get back together and do another album. And maybe that's why you've lasted 20 years. You don't put a ton of pressure on the, uh, on the band. I mean, a lot of bands get together. They go out and they tour for three years. They never get a break. They never get apart. And, uh, you know, one of them goes off and does a solo thing, and the others get pissed off, and then... That's true. They break up. Well, the B, we are a real collaboration, so everybody has a good, strong part of being in the band, so... You can't really do it without uh, anybody, and you, you know, missing. And you're not killing each other when you go into the recording studio? No, we have everything worked out. We work out all our uh, problems, if we have any, before we go into the studio and just let the producer work his magic. Drew? This is Matt, 15. Yeah. Matt, you're on Loveline. Yeah, um, I have a three-inch penis, and I had sex with this girl, and she went and told the whole school that... I have a small penis, and I need to know what to do to keep them from making fun of me. Uh, well, I mean, there's two two ways you could do this. You could either put a contract out on the entire school, or you could just put one out on her. And I'm thinking just her would probably be cheaper, Fred. I say don't worry about it because you're still growing, and I'm sure that will be growing too. Thank you, Fred. That's a good advice. <laughs> Drew, how long does the penis continue to grow? Until you're 21. <sighs> Sorry, Adam. Yeah, I'm 11 years away. <laughs> so that's six more inches. It, it, my, <laughs> and my penis has actually begun uh, contracting. Is that possible, Drew? Yes, it is. All right. Fred, how are you hung? You no, okay? it isn't. No, it isn't. Uh, well, I keep stepping on it, but I can deal with it. <laughs> this is Kelly. Tuck it in your sock when you're walking around. Kelly is 15. Kelly. Um, hey. 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 How are you guys? Good. Good. How are you? I'm okay, I guess. <laughs> What's um, the matter? Okay, I've been with this guy for like ten and a half months, and his mom moved away to Minnesota like a month and a half ago, and he stayed here to finish school, but he's going to move next month. And I love him a lot, and he says he loves me, but he says some really things, to me, like really mean things to me when he's mad. Like he says he hates me, and he doesn't know why we're together. And like he never takes me anywhere anymore. And like two and a half weeks ago, he kissed another girl, mm. and that really hurt me and everything. So we broke up, and then um. He proved himself to me, so we got back together, like, like um, a couple days ago. And I don't know. I mean, he says he loves me, but l I really... Kelly, let me understand this. Is he moving away permanently? Um, he's supposed to come back when he turns 18. And he's 15 now? 16. 16. So he's going to move He's gonna move a, a, a long way away yeah. for two years. Yeah. Can you understand, and I'm sure you must have these same kinds of feelings, that... He must be ambivalent or kind of confused about what he's going to do with his feelings about you. 
And sometimes people deal with that by pushing the other person away so they sort of can get through it and deal with the loss yeah. rather than having to try to hang on to those close feelings from a distance, which can be very painful. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Kelly. Kelly. Yes? The relationship is doomed. I hate to be the grim reaper of uh, relationships, but two years is an eternity. At I that mean, age. Yeah, I mean, the, from 32 to it's 34. A lifetime. It's a lifetime. No big age. deal. But yeah. from 16 to 18 is a completely different world. It's a lifetime. And, uh, and is, it, it, you guys may have the greatest of intentions, but I, I can guarantee you by the time this guy moves back, you will have, you've been through five relationships by then and probably in love with a new guy. And he'll probably be doing the same thing, although he'll still want a piece when he comes back in town. But you won't give it to him because you'll be with a new guy. So, just, just, <laughs> well, he's, but Adam's right. You've got to prepare for that. Of course, Adam Kelly's going to do – she's going to have trouble. She's probably going to stay with the guy till the moment he leaves. But yeah. be prepared because it, this is what needs to happen as this relationship needs to wrap up. Okay. And it's very painful, but it's not nearly as painful as trying to sustain it over a distance at your age. I know, but I, I just I, sometimes I don't know if he loves me, and I don't know. Right now, he probably doesn't know if he loves you because it's a very painful thing to, to leave a relationship at your age, okay? Okay. Good luck, Kelly. Thank you. Okay. Renee, 23. Renee? Hi. Renee? Hi. Hi, guys. Hey. Hi. I just wanted to say hi to Fred. Hey, Renee. How are you? Fine, thanks. Um, my little story I have to tell you. My first concert I went to, um, I was 16. My dad took me to the B-52s. Our favorite song was Rock Lobster. So when I got married in February, the father-daughter song we danced to was Rock Lobster. All right. Sounds like a swinging dad. I, he's very fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. Hey, did you get a cut of that, by the way, Fred? I don't know if I get royalties from weddings. So, all right, so you're a big, uh, big Fred fan, big B-52 fan. You have a question? Nope, that was it. Oh, that was it? I won't see it. Well, I put her on hold. Renee, was there a question? No, there was no question. Just you're going to announce. Thank you, Renee. Thank you. Thanks for the call. Bye-bye. And this is J Jason, 13. Jason. James. James. Thank you, Mike. Excuse okay. me. Um, I have a question for you, Dr. Drew. Yes, sir. Um. When I masturbate sometimes, for some reason when I'm finished, my penis just starts itching, and I don't know why. The skin? Yeah. Well, I mean, you can ear it. You know, you've got an expert on the line, too, and it's not me. Fred? Adam? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> You're not dry humping your grandmother's wool sweater, are you, James? Uh, no. Okay, because that can cause some chafing, plus Granny can get pissed. <laughs> you, you itch when you're done. Yeah. Are you using anything, any, uh, you know, detergent or anything? No uh, shampoo or liquid soap or anything like that? No. All right, just a uh, complete dry run, right? All right. And it, it is, is it scaling or flaking? No. And wow. Like it's a, just, you really are a specialist in this. Oh, absolutely, Drew. Well, uh, you practice it, I, I suspect. Uh, you got to learn something. Drew, i got to tell you, I've been a little off my pace here with the time difference oh, I bet. And, and the obligations. Oh, and, oh the humanity. I'll tell you, I, I almost didn't squeeze one off at the White House, which would have been disappointing. <laughs> Thank God I did. Drew? I'm so proud of you. <laughs> I am so proud to work hey, with you. All right, James. Uh -huh. Maybe you're being a little excessive. How many times a day? Um, two to three. No, that sounds normal. Fred, do you have anything you want to offer up? I I just uh, leave it alone for a while and see what happens and if it. Uh, just recognize you can irritate things. It's yeah. a very delicate bit of skin, and uh, you can really irritate it. Yeah, and James, if James says two or three, that could be four or five or ten or ten uh, on a on a sick day home from school and. If you give it a break for like three days, then that's probably twenty-five times you're you're letting yourself off on. So, and at the age of thirteen, are you really producing that much sperm constantly? Well, or? maybe he's overstating a little bit. Now we got a line, Marissa, sixteen. Ooh. Marissa, hi. 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 Hey, Marissa, you're on Love Line. Oh, okay. Hi, Adam. Hi, Doctor Drew. Hi, hey. Marissa. Okay, so the thing is, um, I had sex with the guy, man, or whatever. Um, yesterday, and he came inside me, and I think I'm ovulating right now. Ugh. And I was wondering if there are any signs that I that I would be pregnant. Like, I'm sorry. When did this happen? Um, yesterday. Yesterday. The 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 overwhelming likelihood is that there's really nothing at this point that oh, you would wait be aware. A minute, of. However, Adam. Yes. Some women, and it's a minority, but some women 
uh, report that they know immediately when they're pregnant. That they can yes. somehow tell that there's some, and they, and no one can really. I, I've discussed this with several women who had this feeling, and none of them can really put a precise description to it. But they've been, for the most part, they're accurate, and All so right. there is that that quality to it. I can tell, Drew. Oh, Adam can tell. Yes, Marissa. Let me ask a few pertinent questions here. Okay. And th- this will this will determine whether you're pregnant or not by this guy. Is he out of work? Um, no, he's not. Oh, he has a job. Yeah. Is it a good job? Um, it's a pretty good job. Pretty good job. Make more than 40000 a year? Um, I think he does. How old okay. is he? Okay. How old? Um, 27. Are you 27? 27, she's oh. 16. Are you related to him? Um, no. Drew, please, let me continue Why, my questioning. Go ahead. Does he have all his teeth? Um, yes, he does. He's 27. Oh. She's 16. Drew, relax over there. I have to find out whether she's pregnant or not. He's got all his teeth. He has a good job. Does he wear a members-only jacket? Um, no, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. All right. I don't think you're pregnant, because if you were pregnant, this guy would be out of work. He'd be an alcoholic. He'd be abusive. He'd have uh, he, he'd be living uh, on the dole, as they say, collecting uh, unemployment or Social Security or something. And no guy with a good job has ever gotten a 16-year-old pregnant. Am I right, Drew? Can't say that. All right. But, but I'm, I'm worried are. that this guy's a criminal also, because he, he's abusing this 16-year-old. Yeah, he's 27 years old. Yeah, that's kind of sick. Yeah. Marissa, do you have any feelings for this guy? Um, I don't know. I'm really confused about him right now. Um, but you know, okay. what, can I put Marissa on hold? Or put her on hold, but let me just say the guy is a, an ass by virtue of the fact that he's having sex with a 16-year-old when he's 27. Something is inherently wrong with him. You, I could never get past. I don't care how great a guy he is. He's having sex with a 16-year-old. He's well, abusing it. And he's not even being responsible enough to wear a freaking condom. Most of the pregnancies that occur to teenagers in this country the, and the ones that go to delivery are perpetrated. The male is an adult. That's and true. so really most unwanted teen pregnancies come as a result of adults abusing young women. All right, so Drew, you talked to her off the air. Tell her about the uh, morning after pill okay. and uh, set her straight about this uh, criminal she uh, just had sex with yesterday. And we will be back with more Fred Schneider after this. This is Loveline. Dr. Drew here. I'm sitting by myself for the first time, uh, free to control the studio here. It's quite a quite a uplifting experience. Adam is in uh, Arlington, Virginia, near Washington, D.C., where he uh, today toured the White House, much to my dismay. And he's there with Fred Schneider, and this is Loveline. This is Loveline. I'm Dr. Drew with Adam Carolla and Fred Schneider, and uh, they are in Washington, D.C., in Arlington, Virginia, and I'm here in Los Angeles all by myself. The phone and number, hang on, what? phone number, one eight hundred L O V E one nine one. That's 568-3191. Fax line, which I've seen no faxes yet tonight, ladies. It's 310-854-4455. Drew, yes, you are one big ball of entertainment. I gotta tell you, I feel so free tonight. Yeah, let me tell you, I'm by myself here. It shows in your voice. Uh, <laughs> free of Adam is really what it boils down to. I'll, I'll tell you, free of me, and you'd be free of a job in about a week. It's the remember, boringest show re- I've ever heard. Remember what your grandmother said. Uh, yes, uh, let me reiterate what my grandmother told me. God bless her. About uh, two months ago, Fred, you'll probably enjoy this. She pulled me aside. She goes, "I listen to the show." I hear you giving Drew a little little bit of trouble now and again. You see him, you make fun of him, you, you poke at him, and you generally you ride the guy. And just let me give you this piece of advice, she says. If they're going to get rid of one of them, it's not going to be Drew. Oh. My own grandmother basically tells me I'm going to get canned from my radio job. The truth hurts. <laughs> Especially when it comes from the family. And Drew. Yeah. Let me, you sound a little dismayed that I was uh, touring the White House. Let me explain something. I was just touring the White House. I wasn't making policy. I was not sitting uh, in the Oval Office uh, banging out some uh, details on NAFTA or anything like that. I was just cruising the grounds and looking to, to stale, uh, looking steal Looking for things. trouble. It right, just scares me down. what you might have done there. I mean, we, we, we all survived it, and the country's intact. But, it, you know. <laughs> oh, please, Drew. Get to the phones. This is Jay, 21. Hello? Jay, you're on Love Line with Fred Schneider from the B-52s. Hey, how you guys doing? Hey. Hey, Fred, I, I, I love the B-52s. They're great. Thank you. You guys are great. Hey, listen, I, I kind of have something for everyone here. Um, that was my thing for Fred. Uh, for Drew, I actually have a question. And uh, this is something I read about 
I used to work at a library, and I read about this, and uh, I've been using this technique for a long time. I was listening to the radio or the show a while ago, and there was a guy talking about masturbation, and uh, apparently that's sort of a topic of uh, expertise for Adam. Oh, Thank yeah. you. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, anyway, what this is is, is uh, a technique that, I, like I was saying, I read about in in uh, this book that sort of redirects the flow of semen. Do you know anything about anything about this? Yeah, we had a call on this. You did. Yes. Right. I remember this a few many months ago. Really? Yeah. It re redirects the flow from I think your I think it was from your uh, comforter to your gym sock. No, it made it yeah, go. Yeah, something like actually it goes like into directly the, from your body into like you know the bladder. It goes into the bladder. I yeah. think is how we understand. Yeah, it. yeah. That's the, I mean that's that's how I read it and and I tried it and it worked it worked fine for me. Uh, and I I was telling a couple of my friends about it and uh, one of them tried it and said it was great. And the other one was like, he's like convinced that there's got to be something medically wrong with that, that it like somehow screws your body up or something. Well, it's so, kind of like those new smokeless cigarettes. Uh huh. You get the same pleasure without the uh, annoying, irritable mess. Right. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and no, no secondhand sperm for for those of you who care about it. Well, usually I'm by myself, but absolutely. Okay. Me too, Drew. I, it just it worries me that you could distort. Or, or sort of overload the anatomy there, but but I don't know that that's the case. I well, mean, what, what isn't I, that what, technically having sex with yourself then if you well, sort you know, of I, I recycle the semen? Well, I don't know. You got semen in you somehow, and you put it there. <laughs> well, it comes out eventually. I mean, what my experience has been that it just it mixes with the urine that's already in the bladder, and, and it comes out. And please yeah. don't think this is a form of birth control because it is not. No, no, no. no. I, I would never use it for birth control. Uh, and in fact, where the place where I read it, it said, you know, that's one of the worst ways to try to, or to use it. But the thing is that, um, uh, I mean, Drew, in your opinion, is there, do you think it was anything that would like? I basically don't have an opinion. It, it, it concerns me that it might, but I don't know that it does. Okay, because I've been doing it for years, and it's never, it's well, never given me a problem. Jay, what okay. do you, uh, what do you do exactly? I mean, where do you pinch? Well, you don't exactly pinch. Um, I think, I think it's technically called the perineum. Perineum. But most people call it the choach. Perineum. Okay. Um, and uh, what you do is you just apply pressure with your fingertip and uh, just, you know, go on your merry way. And it's just, it's not messy. Nothing comes out. Is this a uh, choach between uh, Scrotumberg and Anusville? That's right. Okay. That's exactly it. Fred, you got that picture in your mind? It vivid. <laughs> and let me tell you. I can fax you a picture if you have a problem. Uh, you fax picture. it over to Drew, please. Okay. No thanks. L let me say this. This is a double slap in the face to the Almighty, because not only are you masturbating, which, of course, uh, Jesus makes Jesus cry, but you're then screwing with the masturbation on top of that. Well, you know, when it's, you know, when it's all right, like, Jay, not I'll, convenient. I'll see you in hell. Oh, all right, too much. <laughs> okay. We'll all be there, don't worry. This is, will you be there, Fred? I'll be there. Oh, Everybody great. I know will be there. Oh, we'll have a hell of a band. We'll have fun. You know, you go to heaven. Well, what's the band going to be? See we have, like, of, yeah, we'll air see supply. A bunch of fundamentalists. The cow sills. <laughs> right wingers. Go ahead. Sam, he is 12. Hello? Sam. Hey, how's it going? Hey, you're on Love Line. Hi. Um, I have a problem, you know. I'm 12, but uh, basically 11. I just turned 12 about two days ago. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a... Um, large penis it's about um five five and a half inches long and i already have my pubes and everything but all my friends tell me that like you know they geez you're abnormal you know and stuff like that so i was wondering if there's like an actual name for the problem or something uh it's called lucky i think is what they it's the medical description isn't it drew it sounds more like you went through puberty earlier than most of your peers and as part well, of that there's sort of this whole process that you're describing Probably a little jealous. And yeah, and the, your friends are trying to make you feel bad for how they feel. Basically, they're sort of projecting no, it no, on no. you. I'm not too worried about them. I mean, I just tell them to screw off, basically, because you know. But I wanted to know if there's an actual like name for the problem. Is it's not like a problem. A, well, it's, it's it's not a problem. But it's, you know, it, 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 if it were a medical problem, which it isn't, it would be premature puberty. Uh, and there, there's you know. I don't want to get into it, but there's abnormalities of, of phallus growth and whatnot that can happen. But that's not what you have. You just, okay. All right? All right, thanks. Don't worry about it, Sam. All, all right, right, Sam. Have fun with your large penis. This is Chris21. Chris. Yeah, hello, Dr. Drew. Chris. All right. Um, right. I've taken over 400 hits of acid. Mm-hmm. And it may kind of sound unbelievable, but 
so long time ago, and I was wondering what the side effects would be within uh, five or ten years. How long ago was the last time you did it? Uh, my 19th birthday. So, so two, years two years ago. Yeah. Um, the, I can only report to you what I have seen, and the medical literature is sort of scant on this, but I can tell you it's it's pretty obvious when somebody goes through this kind of an exposure because it ha every time I see this, the same thing happens to people. One is when you're using it a lot, you can really develop some significant problems in your cognition and your ability to concentrate, your ability to have new learning, your memory. I had one guy that was doing it like three times a day in high school. And well, I, a little bit more than that. But. By the end of it, uh, by the end of high school, he told me, I, I saw him years down the line when he had other problems, which I'll tell you about. But he said when he was using, it got to the point that he couldn't figure out how to put his pants on. He put his actually one day put his pants on backwards by accident because he and, and they, I've seen this again too that people tend to develop these abnormalities of their spatial orientation. It wasn't one of those kids from crisscross, was it? No. Okay, okay. Well, but he might have established that whole trend. But the more significant problem, and this is the one that I see over and over again with people that even do a moderate amount of acid, is mood disturbances. And these mood disturbances tend to be chronic, and they often don't develop for at least ten years after your last use of the LSD. All right, Drew? Would impatience have to do anything with that? Yeah, irritability, irritability, anxiety, sleep disturbances. These are all part of the syndrome that develops, and it becomes intractable. Okay. And it's it's because of the damage you've done to your brain from the LSD. And that's sort of a characteristic symptom that you get beforehand is you, you tend to, the people that tend to continue to see trailers after fast-moving objects. With trails, yeah. Yeah, you see that? Well... At certain times. Yeah. Those, those I've only had one bad trip. Bad trips have nothing to do with it. In fact, I welcome the bad trip. I wish bad trips on everybody. No, I'm no, sorry. I don't, I don't. Because the bad I trip... hits the purple shield, then Chris, I don't wish a bad trip Chris, on anyone. Chris, but, but the reason is the bad trip is what makes people stop. And the bad no, trip... No, it don't, though. It well, doesn't. It doesn't right. have to. That hey, hey, them, Drew, hey, put this guy on hold for a second. A What's that, Chris? For Christ's sake. Oh. What's that, Chris? It's me. That gives them a better kind of feeling to where I will take six hits next time to where I will have a better trip. Right. Well, that, To I, where they want to boost the feeling up that, just that, ten times more. That's not been my... I've not seen that, but I can understand why people might, might start reasoning that way. It's pretty uh, distorted reasoning. Drew, can you relax for a second? Yes. You're not doing your own late-night cable show on Channel 22. All right. It's a national radio show. All right. Now, we, I want to involve the guest here for a second. Now, Fred Schneider... I haven't taken that much acid. Right, but you've wrote, written songs or been involved with songs like, uh, you know, Planet Claire and, uh, you know, Keisha Lorraine. And certainly this had to be dr drummed up in s out of some kind of a drug-induced stupor. No, not necessarily. <clears throat> Excuse me, no. But maybe. Um, I've been on smoke pot and written things, yeah. Right. But um, you can have a fertile imagination without having to do drugs. Yeah. It's more fun to party, you know away from work. I'm not condoning it. I'm just wondering. Yeah. You've, you've been around long enough. You've worked with some people. You've tried some things yourself. I've been yourself. around people who've taken lots of acid. And how, how, do you, how does it manifest itself later on? Are you still in contact with these people? Uh, they, they're not that bad off, but they do have some uh, me memory loss. Right. You know that for sure. Uh, and mood problems, usually. Mood, um, usually. Usually. Not the ones I know, but I, I do know uh, the memory thing goes. That could also be vitamin deficiency. I no, mean, no, no. If you're, no, believe me. Believe no, me. It is, it I is, mean, if you take a lot of... It has been shown. I mean, it's been shown in the laboratory that you, you will actually destroy brain tissue or destroy oh, brain. destroy. Okay, yeah. so... All right, Drew? Yes. All right, you off your soapbox? I'm off. You ready to go to another call? Why don't you pick a call? Uh, let's go to line 17. Mm. <laughs> okay, <laughs> wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. There's wait. only eight lines. There we go. This is Denise, 19. Uh, yeah, uh, this is Denise's boyfriend. Ah. Uh, it has to do with me, though. We were interested in uh, in having uh, anal sex. She just became uh, too frightened. Before. Adam, you take this call. Uh, thank you. What's your name, sir? Uh, my name is Bill. Bill? All right. Hey, that was pretty quick thinking, whatever your name is. No, I just don't want to say my name on there. I understand. Bill, uh, how old are you? Uh, I'm 21. 21, and your girlfriend, Denise, is? She's 19. 19. Yeah. And you have not yet uh, explored the pleasures of anal no, love? I'm, I'm trying to encourage her into, into exploring the pleasures. Yeah, what a surprise. Usually it's the woman that's begging for the anal sex, and the guy is reluctant. I was being facetious there, Fred. Fred had a look on his face. Like, no, it is? What? Huh? Hey. Well, no, I hear about my other friends 
you know, and they're all doing it, and they're all trying to pump me up. And But I, I've actually been interested from, like, when I was a lot younger, and I don't know if it's, you know, I, I used to, I told a couple of my friends, and they thought, they you know, teased me about being a homosexual and stuff. So that's my interest in, in trying it. Now, Bill. Yeah. Uh, are you, You're interested because your friends are goading you on. Well, yeah, I mean, I, mean, I, I can think for myself, you know, but I, I just want to, Right, just not say, sexually. We can, we, can, we can touch better. Me, you know, me and Denise can. Right, no better together. bonding experience than when you're inflicting an immense amount of pain on someone's uh, rectum. Right. Well. Right. Right. And let me tell you something. Here's my opinion on this. And uh, you know, Fred, you tell me what you think. I believe that most men are interested uh, in in the anal sex. Uh, you know, as it pertains to uh, their their female partner, at least, mm -hmm. because it's a power thing. I mean, when you're back there, and your penis is in someone's rear end, you are driving. You are in control. And you are absolutely the, uh, the, the, the king of all you survey, even if it's just uh, the back of their head you're looking at. But you know what I'm saying. Uh -huh. The answer to every question is yes. Drew, you've heard me talk about this. You're in someone's butt. The answer is yes. I don't care what you ask them. Do you love me? Yes. Uh -huh. Am I the greatest guy you've ever been with? Yes. Whatever the question is, the answer is yes when you're in someone's rear end, and I think it's kind of a power thing. But I could be wrong. Well, Fred, some, I'm what do sure you think? Some women enjoy it, some don't. Uh, uh, if she doesn't want to do it, don't force her. If you love her, why force her? Oh, stop. She oh, might want to try. Diplomat. Listen, he's here in Washington. No. He's acting like a congressman already. Well, no. Well, what am I supposed to say? Senator you know? Fred, please. Now, what do, you, what do you know about this? Any first-hand experience? Ah. <laughs> I would just say, don't force her. She doesn't want to do it. And why should you feel like any pressure from your friends? You, maybe you're missing something. Maybe you're not. A little pressure is fine, but not pressure from the rear. Yeah. Well, like, like I was talking before, I I fantasized. And when I uh, was younger, there were stories about anal sex, you know, like in Playboy and stuff. So that's why. Well, maybe she'll come around and want to do it. But if she, for the time being, she doesn't. And, and all you're going to do is end up pissing her off. I mean, you're going to get her drunk. Well, you you're going to talk her into it. Should I go out and maybe, you know, look? And plus, your friends might be telling you they're doing it, and they're not. Who knows? Yeah, they might be just true. full of baloney. Yeah. Yeah, Bill? Yeah. Uh, if she doesn't want to do it, don't do it. If, uh, she's, if she's sort of teetering, then go ahead and try to, uh, you know, talk her into it. If she's sort of on the fence. Uh, but she doesn't sound like she's near the fence on this one. No. Okay? All right, she doesn't well, want to sit on the post. Right. <laughs> This is James. James is 19. Hey, how's it going? Hey, James. All right, I've got a problem. All right. Um, I'm 19, my girlfriend's 17, okay? And uh, I've got a six-and-a-half-month-old son with another girl. Wow. And um, she, my girlfriend now is two months pregnant. We plan on keeping him. Ah. Uh. Okay, and I'm not sure. I, I was never, I never stayed with the other girl, and I'm not sure. Like, we used to have, like, sex three or four times a week, right? And now since in the past week and a half, it's only been twice we had it. Or a month and a half, I've only had it twice, right? Mm-hmm. And before now we... she, she's been talking about going out to the clubs, and tonight she ended up going to a club without me, without telling me or anything. She's pregnant. And she's pregnant, yeah. Is she drinking? No, she doesn't drink. She's, she's very careful about that. She quit smoking and everything like that. No, nothing, you know. And then I, I'm supportive, too. I quit drinking and smoking pot, but I still smoke cigarettes. Hey, around her. Why don't you start wearing a condom instead of worrying about quitting drinking and pot? Yeah, I know. Well, we, she was on birth control and everything. Like what? Um, through the clinic, they gave her birth control. A pill? Yeah. And she, was she taking it properly? She. T we made sure she took it every single day. Wow. Never did. None of that. That's very unusual. Uh, I don't well, believe Well, it's still it. your responsibility to wear a condom. Yeah, yes. I understand that. Yes, All yes. right, but it's his girlfriend, and he believes that she's on the pill. Now, I believe, Drew... Hmm that she probably did something wrong. She missed a day or right. she somehow mistook the pill. Right. Because uh, otherwise there's a virtually uh, zero like percent. Chance. No, it's yeah. like, like a fraction of a percent. But, but J James is uh, Johnny A-hole seed. I mean, he's, he's spreading it out all over the place and appears to have the uh, strong swimming sperm. Yeah, why God would play this cruel joke on society, why guys like James have to have the mighty sperm, I don't know. Perhaps there's some big plan that I'm not aware of. Maybe one of your litter over the course of your lifetime will grow up to uh, invent something important, James. Sounds good. <laughs> 
Well, what what do you think I should I should should I be suspecting something that she's cheating on me or something for her going out to the club or anything like that? Well, you should suspect that something is up with her emotionally, that she's not getting something from you, or that she's manipulative or scared, or something is going on that's that's causing her to behave in this kind of fashion. Drew, don't don't you think it would be? Don't you think he should just dump her and go knock up some other teenager? Oh, sure, Adam. Oh, Great no, advice, no. big guy. <laughs> Hell no. But I mean, huh? I mean, How so old are you, you, you? What's that? How old are you again? I'm 19. 19. She's, she's 17. I mean, you've got to you've got to find a way to get her to tell you what is going on and why she's doing this, and don't do it in a very, don't be too confrontative or aggressive about it. Try to give her an opportunity to tell you what is up. There's some reason for this. And maybe she's afraid. Who knows? I mean, I mean, you got to find out. We can't we can't speculate. Yeah, I know I've brought up the fact to her that I've wondered if she was cheating on me quite a bit lately. No, 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 no. Forget. No, 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 no. Forget about you being cheated upon. Find out what her needs are and what is going on with her that she feels that she has to go out like that and parade around. And, and so, uh, She's pregnant. I mean, Does she go out with her friends or does she go out by herself? She goes out with like three of her friends. All right. There could be three gals going out just to have a good time. James right. is, uh, I mean, she could just be anxious about this pregnancy. I mean, who knows? I mean, but Fred, James... you're, you're not aware of my testicle uh, confiscation program, <laughs> but James is now heading the list. <laughs> I'm going to take his testicles. I'm going to put them in a mason jar with a little light syrup, and I'm going to store it in some sort of underground facility, someplace that used to be a silo, but because of peacetime, it's been, it's been uh, transformed into something we could all benefit from. And uh, Fred, you can keep your nuts for now, but we'll okay. we'll wait and see how the night pans out. Or stay nuts, whatever. <laughs> this is Christy, fifteen. Christy. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay, I'm like about two twenty, and I'm only fifteen years old, and I'm only five one, and I need help, like how to get a boyfriend, like how to get a guy to notice me and stuff. You need to seriously get a good diet doctor to help you lose some weight, to. Uh, for your health first. I mean, when you're that heavy, it's really hard on your heart and whatever. So one way to do it is to take care of yourself first before you worry about getting a guy. I know, but like I've tried like walking and dieting and stuff and it just don't work for me. Christy. Yeah. Are your parents overweight? No. They're not? No. Um, so it doesn't look like a, like a uh, family thing? No, it's not like hereditary or nothing. Well, what's going on then? There's just like junk food all over the house, and I just like can't help myself. Or where are your parents? Are they there? No. You're lying. I'm not all right, lying. All right, forget about it. Just yell at your parents for me. All you right. have a 220 pound 15 year old girl who's 5'1, and, and you're, you're leaving um, Funyuns around the house? What well, the hell's up with that? I don't know. I, I mean, say bye. that's just a little bit irresponsible, isn't it? Drew? Yeah, it is. Uh, it's interesting you would perceive it that way, uh, given that you know you were your your dietary world was structured so so much by your family. Oh, but Drew, it, let's not worry about me for five seconds. We have a caller with a problem. But it's I'm just I'm just sympathizing with the parents. It's hard to get kids not to eat stuff. I mean, we have junk around our house too, and uh, you know, kids won't eat, won't eat, won't eat, and you end up getting garbage, then they eat it. Yeah, but your kids are are, are, are going like uh, ferrets on a double cappuccino. I mean, those kids are all over the house. God forbid they put any panties on, but they're running all over the house. He has triplets, Fred. They're all three. And oh, this God. guy, they're just burning calories constantly. Yeah, yeah, I understand. I mean, it's, it's different. All right, but, yeah, you're right. I mean, it is irresponsible parenting if you don't, whatever the hard choice is, if you don't do it on behalf of the child, if it's in the child's best interest, you're, it's not good parenting. All right, Drew, listen. Put Christy on hold. Because I'm going to work out a uh, exercise and diet program for her. And uh, Fred's going to help me out, too. We're going to concoct it during the break. That's true. And we'll be back with more Fred Schneider after this. All right. With, uh, back on Loveline with uh, Fred Schneider. He has a CD out called Just Fred. He is from the B-52s. You know his work from all those years. But now... He has a solo project he'd like you guys to, um, well... Beg frankly, you guys to buy. <laughs> beg you guys to go out and buy. Even if you don't like it, just go buy it, would you? You'll like it whether you buy it or not. Well, let me explain. Fred has a certain lifestyle he's accustomed to, and he'd like to keep it up. Uh, yeah, I'm, you know, shilling myself on, you know, late-night talk shows and 
Right. <laughs> I, I take that as a backhanded compliment. Not even a backhanded compliment. That's just a, uh, that's just a limp penis right across the face, right? Oh, boy, that's a pain. That draws up imagery, doesn't it? <laughs> All right, now we're going to play another little song called Whip in a few minutes, but... As we left off with, uh, was it Christy? Christy, she's still with us. Yeah, yeah 15, uh, 5'1", 210 pounds? 220. 220. Did you put on 10 pounds during the commercial, or was it always 220? It was always 220. Okay, and your folks are buying the uh, fatty, sugary, salty, snacky foods and leaving them around the house. Yeah. Okay, but you, you got to understand it's not up to them, is it? No, it's up to me. Do you think that if, like, I started walking and everything, that I would lose weight? I think you need to drastically curtail your caloric intake, and you need to do it with a balanced diet. You should consult with a dietitian or a doctor or somebody to make sure this is in a monitored fashion, because you're gonna you're gonna have to exercise will not be enough. All right, I'll you're gonna to have to be hungry all the time probably, and you got to find something that you can eat. Other than the Funyuns and the Butterfingers. And a, and a school counselor, too, yeah. possibly. To, yeah. right. If your parents aren't interested, uh, that interested, maybe your I mean, school counselor. There, there, that and there's the whole notion of why people put on that kind of weight and what the emotional circumstances are that lead somebody to, to put on that kind of a, really becomes a barrier to your, your peers and other people. Christy. Yeah. Do your folks seem concerned or they're not doing anything? Well, yeah, I mean, they're concerned, but I mean, they tell me that I got to lose weight and stuff, but like... I don't know. I'm going to have to like sit down and talk to them and tell them that they can't buy that food or leave it laying around or something. Good. That's but good. It, it, Christy, is your life hell at school? No. Well, people tease me and stuff, but... That's a shame. Yeah, I mean, it's. It, uh, I was uh, talking to Fred during the break about this, and I think this is the, the biggest, pardon the pun, form of discrimination in America. I mean... I, I I know guys that'll that'll go out with black women, Hispanic women, Jewish women, Ethiopian women, doesn't matter. But they're not going out with a fat woman. And and, and I think it's the same with hiring practices and it's certainly you you're, you're going to feel the brunt of it uh, at your age in junior high or going into high school. I mean, this Christy, this is going to be a life of heartache, tears and struggle for you. And I know it's going to be painful to lose the weight, but you might as well just work on it now because each year you spend at that weight is is, an, is a year of torment. All right. All right. All right? Good luck, you Yeah, set realistic goals for yourself, but stick to them. That's, this is a decision and a thing you've got to really do yourself, too, with help from friends, but you've got to do it. And, Fred, you're telling me you had a niece that's uh, overweight. I do, and uh, she needs. She's, you know, losing it by exercising. And Fred just gave me that uh, not on the air puss. <laughs> he just gave me one of those. We weren't going to talk about that, were we? But she's. Y it's you It's true. Can when see when how kids are overweight, it, it they get teased and tortured by their peers, and it's up to the parents to help. And if not the parents, for the hopefully the kid can find uh, some guidance at school, you know, All right, in the up. right direction. Adam. You got another call? Carol, 25. Hi. Hey, Carol. How are you? Good. How much you weigh? Uh, 180. Really? Yeah. You're, you're, you're not Fred's niece, are you? No. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. How old is she? 21. A little, a little old to be my niece. 25. <laughs> I have a problem. I am 25 and I've never had an orgasm. Mm-hmm. And I... Whenever I think I'm close, I get um, afraid, and I, I stop my husband or whatever. You know, it's like right. I try to fight it, but right. I'm afraid of you, what it is. How long have you been with your husband? Oh, well, we've been married for three years, and we've been together for like ten, but we've had other relationships in between. Uh -huh. So I've had many different guys, but nobody can do it for me, I guess. <laughs> Uh, you, you you need to hold one of those uh, contests. You know, you, you you read in those old fairy tales where the queen, uh, who never laughed for 50 years, and brings on all these people, and they, they, like, juggle. And I guess in your case, there'd be things that took batteries involved. But maybe some form of competition you could have in your town. Well, I could um, ask my husband about that. <laughs> You've never had an orgasm? Never. 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 Jeez, I just, are you afraid, or are you just I think do I you am. pull I think back is when you're feeling pleasure or something? I'm. Yep. I I stop. I push him away, and and then he gets upset because he feels that he's failing me. But I I don't know if I'm being if I'm punishing myself for being promiscuous 
throughout the years that I I don't feel I deserve it. All right. Here, here's the answer. First off, have you ever brought yourself to orgasm on your own? No. So, no, I, I've tried, sort of, because I've been told to try to masturbate, but I, I can't. I, it doesn't work. <laughs> okay. So it's you, odd. You are, you are sort of punishing yourself. I mean, you, you told us the answer to this. You're scared of letting go. It, it, you're scared of probably scared of being uh, vulnerable in front of whoever is uh, doing the work, be it uh, licking or or otherwise. Mm -hmm. And you're you're punishing yourself. I think you need to. Uh, you need to relax. You need to relax. It's your husband, and you've got to share everything with him. So well, you. I'd like to... him to tie me up just so that I can't stop him. But then I think I'll blow up or. <laughs> I just I don't I, I'm afraid. I don't... But here's the deal, Carol. Here's what you need to do. You need to get one of these under your belt. Because as soon as you get one under, you're gonna, it, it's, it's going to be a new day. You're going to open the front door. There's going to be doves flying around. Chipmunks running Chipmunks, around. Chipmunks, uh, yes, like kissing Animal in the trees. <laughs> you're going to hear that sort of angelic... Uh, Baby uh, deer will run across the lawn. Do that sound, Adam. I like that sound. Oh! <laughs> big beam of light is going to come down and hit you. You're going to skip out and get the mail. You're going to float. You won't even touch the paveway on the way back. You're just going to float right back into the living room. You must get over this. You must let yourself go. Where's your husband? Um, He's playing poker right now. And it's, oh boy. <laughs> he should be playing some poker at home, if you know what I'm saying. And it's probably, it's not the physical feeling so much as the feelings, that, the, the emotional content that comes with that, that you're, you're pulling back from and you said it yourself it's because you're promiscuous but what's beneath that why were you being promiscuous before i mean what were you doing that what were you acting out at that age and uh try to be as adam says try to be vulnerable i've heard that um some women don't until they're in their early 30s well all right but don't all right do not rely on that do and not probably use that suffering is your crutch yes you know who those women are those are the mean cross-eyed women who you run into those are the people that snap at you when you come in front of them you uh, do not want to be one of those bitter orgas orgasmless women do you no, no all right carol promise me tonight when your husband gets back if he's not too liquored up to perform that you will just relax, just breathe deeply. Put on your favorite uh, B-52 song. Mm -hmm. One of the wild I ones. <laughs> and just lay there and let it happen. Do not do everything for once. Do not control everything for once. Drew, there's nothing better than the orgasm. Am I right? Uh, I, I wish I was a man so that I would know. <laughs> I have no problem. You'll, you'll know, Carol. You'll know. You'll get, a, you're, you'll get a cramp in your right foot, and you'll get a big vein in your forehead. Well, but, sometimes it's, I seem close to it, and then I, then I pass out, but pass then I, out. nothing ever comes of it. I mean, that's only happened a couple times. Or I cry. <laughs> Carol. Interesting. Carol, I have some, some imagery for you. Okay. Close your eyes. All right. All right. Are they closed? Yeah. Next time you get to the edge, you get close, you, you're on the brink of the big O. Mm -hmm. I want you to picture yourself standing over a huge chasm like the Grand Canyon, and you're right up at the edge. And instead of sitting back, I want you just to leap and let okay. the love parachute break your fall. How poetic. That was beautiful, wasn't it? That was Couldn't weird. I write lyrics for one of your songs? Uh, well, why don't you do a solo album? Certainly I could come up with the Keisha Lorraine line. <laughs> Adam, speaking, I don't know. speaking of one of the songs, it is time. Uh, what, what do you want? It is time for one oh, of the songs. Oh, it is time. Oh, Drew, look, you're right on top of things. The guy hasn't had an orgasm since 73. He's right on top of things. Yes, that is true. We're playing another song off of Fred Schneider's solo effort called Just Fred, and the name of this one would be Whip. Whip from Fred Schneider off of Just Fred. More Love Line, more that irritable Dr. Drew, more Adam Carolla, and more Fred Schneider after this. Hey, this is Adam Carolla. I am sitting in Arlington, Virginia, in the uh, Westwood One facility over here. Doc Drew is back at the Westwood One facility in Los Angeles. I was out here for the HFS Festival in Washington, where they had this big old concert at RFK Stadium. I brought on the President of the United States of America and was hit 
with a roll of Mentos. I know. They've been complaining about that. They said now, since they did a uh, video that sort of has that feel of a commercial like a Mentos that people constantly throw oh, that's, uh, candy at him and gets hit in the head with it. But that's uh, Dave Grohl. Yeah. Uh, pre the president of the U.S. Yeah. No, oh. no. That's uh, uh, the oh, uh, oh, oh, okay. yeah, Foo well, Fighters. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Well, that's and why you're seeing all those things getting thrown. The uninformed voice across the uh, table from me is the voice of Fred Schneider, who was hanging out with Dave Grohl. Yeah, and I'm the dumb bell who just reported that. Yeah, but that's okay. You brought it up, and we straightened it out. Well, that, the presidents will get hit by uh, rotten peaches. <laughs> <laughs> and we were, uh, we were down in the hotel lobby uh, last night after the concert with, uh, oh, everyone was there, Lush and Crack and the presidents. And a bunch and, uh, of lushes. You were off in the corner chatting it up with Dave. With everybody. Yeah, is he a My nice guy? Oh, yeah. A bunch of good people. That was the report that I got. Ann and I came up and inter introduced ourselves to you and offered you a ride into the studio with us. Well, I don't take candy from strangers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, you were hip for it at the time, but you probably had a few beers in you and thought wiser uh, this afternoon. Yeah, I thought, you know, I'll just, I'll just get in that car. That's yeah, all. they sent you a lovely limo. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, anyway, we it's came down up, there somewhere. We came up to talk to you, and we also wanted to say hi to Dave Grohl. But as soon as Ann and I walked up, you notice he took like four steps back and made a one eighty and waited until we left, and then he came back and joined your conversation. Yeah, I wonder. I wonder why I was hiding behind the stairs. <laughs> I think Your it has reputation. something to do with us. Yes, it precedes us. Drew. Yes, this is Don. Oh, oh yes, fantastic. Twenty two. Yeah, I'm here. What's your question? Well, um, I was just, I'm, it's kind of a sexual therapy kind of a question. And um, it just has to do with, I, I broke up with this guy about a month ago. And since then, there's been several guys asking me out. And there's been, you know, a lot of, a lot of stuff going on in my life. And I've gone out with, I've gone out with a lot of the, these guys. Like, well, there's, there's four of them <clears throat> in particular that, you know, that I've been involved with in the past month. But there's, but in the back of my mind, I keep on thinking about this one guy that things can, couldn't go, I could, couldn't happen with him. And I'm just kind of having trouble, like, juggling these four guys and if it's worth, like, even thinking about or, I mean, because I'm just, I'm just with them mostly for sexual reasons. I mean, okay. because just to pretty much to please myself or, you know, some ego thing that I have going for myself. I don't know what it is. But some, some validation you need. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, but I mean, none of them are. That ends up not. It ends up not validating you, does it? It ends up making you feel kind of bad about yourself. Oh, only sometimes. I no. mean, I go out and I have a good time, and I love. You know, I. I love at, what... at best, at best, you have a good time, and you sort of forget about how you're feeling about the loss of the other guy. At, yeah. at worst, you end up feeling bad about yourself. True. Do not put words in the young caller's mouth, please. Some people turn to the Bible. For validation, some people turn to the the clergy or their parents. Others turn to the male phallus, like Don, for validation. Am I, am I right, Don? Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, it's not it's not necessarily just males either. I mean, I've, oh. I've, I'm I'm bisexual, and I mean, I haven't been with any women lately. But I mean, I I catch myself like one of my close friends. I catch myself just like you know like thinking about her and about how she would be like in a relationship and stuff. All right, so you, you're basically, uh, you're open 24 hours a day for business, right, Don? <laughs> no, not necessarily. Oh, you don't discriminate. All customers are welcome. Okay, so you're swinging, but you, you still can't help but think about this old guy. Well, yeah. And, he's and you like, want to know what to do. He's still around, and it's like he, he won't return my pages, and he won't, he won't call me back. And, and my friends tell him, you know, well... You know, she wants her stuff back because he's got a few things that I really that I really like, and and it's such like, as what, Adam? What do you think she left over there? Uh, I'm guessing valuable, big ticket items, durable goods such as chapstick, maybe a comb, no, perhaps a bad shawl that's no. in his hall closet. Gorgeous, fabulous earrings, and you know, a couple of a couple of really nice shirts. You know, all right, so then that stuff. It. Then you planted that stuff, knowing one day you'd return to retrieve them and possibly uh, have a sexual encounter. I know I how you women plant were. That stuff. I want that stuff back. I left it there. It happened kind of. Uh, it happened kind of like mutually. Like we we mutually agreed that we weren't getting along. I mean, like we like we would we weren't getting along in anything. Like we weren't seeing eye to eye. Like. I thought that he was cool, you know, he had, like, all these different things going on for him, but, and he comes all from, right. like, our Don, family bringing Don, 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 
Why do you want to get back with him if you already agreed mutually that it wasn't going to work out? Well, because I think about him a lot, and I think that he's just so hard-headed that that he should, you know, and he didn't even, he, he, he can't see All right, it from my point Don, of view. Don, let me tell you what's going on. Right, he's hard-headed. He can't see it from your point of view. You want some payback. You want to even the score. This is a pride thing. This well, is I'd like some kind of explanation, at least. Uh, that's right. And he's not returning your pages, and he's not returning your phone calls, and you're pissed off because your pride is hurt. Well, maybe a little bit, but I mean... Okay, that's the key issue. Let's stray over to, the e over to the earrings. Drew? Yeah, something happened in this studio. I thought it happened on the air. But... I think Fred broke wind. Fred? <laughs> Oops, sorry. Oh, there it is again. <laughs> Don... Forget about the earrings. It's it's him and your pride that you're trying to retrieve. You want to go to his house not to get the earrings, but to get the pride. Well, also to see him, yeah, but I don't want to go and fight with him. Oh, you know, you're going to start a fight the second you walk into that door. As soon as you cross the threshold. Well, I know that well what's wrong with this creep that, that he won't give you your earrings him. back? What? What's wrong with him that he won't give you your earrings back? Have you That's asked him? That's what I'm wondering. It's just like I've been totally cool about the whole thing, you know? Unless he pawned him or... And Don. I, I mean, I, I think he's telling me he's. He, it's just like he doesn't want to see me ever again, and you know that's really fine with me. No, it's not fine with you. Fine Don't with play you, that. That's that fine with you. If, BS. If, if all you want is the earrings and the shirt, then send him a letter that he should mail that to you, and he'll mail it to you. He just wants to cut all contact. Well, he because could drop. He, he could drop it. I know that's what I'm thinking too. He just wants to, you know, like Don, never see me again. And Don. That's Gone. But that would be cool. If Drew, I could cut her off if she's going to ramble on like a uh, auctioneer on. Wait, I just on, let's on just speed. let's just start with something very basic. Can can you accept that he never wants to see you again? Because that's the fact. Can yeah, you? Yeah. Well, if he would. Don. Don. Don no, no. 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 I'm putting her on hold. Can you accept? Oh. Can you accept? Right. You can't even accept that. Well, if he would quit coming into my work, it would oh. be okay. Okay. Now the plot thickens. Where do you work? At a feed place? No, I work in a I work in a deli. At a deli. All right. Well, you're feeding people there. Well, yeah. And you're using animals. All right. And he comes in there and he frequents that place. Yeah. And so something's wrong with him, too. All right. <laughs> listen. Here's here's my conclusion. You're both effed up, okay? Now, here's the deal. You need your earrings back and your grandmother's shawl. You tell him next time he comes into the deli to put it in a bag and give it to whoever's behind the counter. They'll put it behind the counter and you'll retrieve it at your leisure. He wants nothing to do with you. You're trying to salvage pride where where there is none to salvage, and this is futile. Yeah, you're, it's, it's a... you're going to get deeper and deeper, more and more invested, and you're it's going to come up snake eyes for you, Don. So move on and torment some other man. As we shall move on to Jennifer, 25. Hi. Hi hey, Jennifer. Hey. <laughs> you know, I really wish I had had some guys like you in my life when I was like 14 or 15 and needed this kind of help. <laughs> really? Yeah, it would have been a lot easier, I think. What about now, sure. baby? Uh, what? Jennifer, right. go ahead. What's the deal? Oh, I um. Pay no attention to the man in Arlington. Yeah, yeah. I was at the festival yesterday. I wanted to. I was hoping to meet you guys. Oh really? I was the guy getting the Mentos rammed up his ass. Up on stage. <laughs> yeah, I was. I was uh, right up front. I was uh, moshing. Well, anyway, I'm uh, in recovery. I'm a drug addict, alcoholic, food addict, and um, I've. Uh, I did like a year, you know, like everyone says when you get in recovery. You're in you're in recovery year, no relationship during that time. Right. right. Yeah. No well, new relationship. I did like very briefly, exactly a year ago, and it was a nightmare. And I got out as quick as I could. It was right. just it was ridiculous. So, um, so now it's really been a clean year, and um, I'm really having trouble like working myself back in. I feel like really out of the loop, and. Um, a lot of the people in Annapolis, which is where I live, are like older. It's an older recovery community, and so every now and then I go into the cities and and hang with younger people and stuff. But but you should work on meeting people outside of the recovering community. You don't have to rely on the recovering community to provide your social world too. Well, I mean, it's, it's, yeah, I do. Yeah, I, I mean, it's so. it's not really it's not really. A, I mean, it's okay to do that after you've been sober a few years, but it's not the healthiest thing to do necessarily. I mean, you should go out <laughs> and and begin to network with other people with other kinds of interests and and pursuits of your own. Uh, you know, and hopefully that you won't you won't pick up any addicts as you might attract. You know, that, that sort of might might be what you end up. I hope you're tuned into that. I'm R sorry. Right? Yeah, addicts tend to attract addicts sometimes, and so be careful. You <laughs> oh, know, that, really? That might be what you what you attract. But but uh, you well, know, I do stuff. I mean, like I like I said, I'm in an outdoor club, and um, you know, I'm in school. 
that you know what pursue it that's all just pursue it network with your friends don't rely on the recovering community so much i mean it's great that you're connected and you make outreach calls and you're you're going to meetings on a regular basis don't by all means don't stop doing that for course drew what do you think about her paying for sex at this point no adam it may surprise you but not everybody has to do that <laughs> we got to go to break fred you ever pay for sex uh well after the show yeah yeah what do you what do you got on you uh, just my looks. All right, because it's early. I got a per diem. You got a limo. We're staying in the same hotel. Oh, that's true. They did drive me. Well, you can't use the limo. Sorry. All right, but even even for a little while it's parked. Um. Well, you know the garage. I don't care. They got the Scotch guard down on the upholstery. Uh. <laughs> I brought a raincoat. <laughs> Fantastic. That's uh, Fred Schneider. You know him from the B52s, and now from his solo effort, just Fred. And we will be back to wrap up after this. Well, just enough time to give uh, thanks and a, and a quick message, actually. Uh, Adam West will be in on Wednesday. Fred, I'm sure you're a big fan of his. Oh, major. And, I love Batman. And we'll have the Deftones on Thursday. Uh, tomorrow, we'll be back to normal. I will be back in Los Angeles, and I will be able to beat up and Drew on, uh, in person, as it were. Ooh, I, I can't wanna, wait. I want to thank Quiet there, Drew. You had your moment in the sun. I did indeed. I want to thank the uh, lovely Lisa for doing the phones tonight, the fantabulous Sherry for doing the phones tonight, the wonderful traveling companion, the angular one, and the producer. She's been fantastic this whole weekend. I want to thank Fred Schneider for coming in and tell everyone to go out and get just Fred. Please. Please, we're begging you. Yes, I'm on my knees. He's almost a, he, he's almost out of the limo and down to the town car. He has to move product. Yes, I, I have to be seen everywhere. Well, thank you for coming by, Fred. Thank and you. Uh, thanks to everyone at Westwood One and everyone here at, uh, in Arlington, Virginia, and all that stuff, and the HFS people, and we'll talk to you tomorrow night. You've been listening to Loveline. The opinions expressed on Loveline, especially by Adam Carolla, are not necessarily those of the staff, management, or sponsors, or even the character voices. Loveline, produced by Ann Wilkins for Westwood One Entertainment.